Father, Lord, we bless your holy name. We adore you, we lift you high, we magnify you. You are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised, O God. There is no one like you, Jehovah. You reign in the heavens, O God. You reign on earth, O God. And you seated in the heavens and make the earth your footstool. You are the one that seeth it and it come to pass. You are the God of all creation. You are the one that knows the beginning from the end. And you know the end even from the beginning. Jehovah God, you all time. You control time. You are the maker of time. And you are timeless. Father Lord, nobody knows your depth and your height. You are the magnificent. You are the greatest. And as well, you are our Father. Lord, we bless your name. We give you thanks. Be exalted, Lord, forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Jehovah God, I invite you, O oh God, into this meeting tonight, into this program tonight. I pray that you have your way. Take control in the name of Jesus. Let the words that come out of my mouth, let it be from your throne of grace above directly. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> Lord, I pray that I shall not be the one that people will see. But they shall see you only in the name of Jesus. It shall all be all about you, Lord. I decree so that you can increase in me. I pray, Lord, that you send this message. That you let it touch the hearts of men, Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Speak through me. I don't even know how I'm going to say it. But I know that you have something to tell us. All of us, including myself. Father, take control. Holy Spirit, have your way. I need you. I lean on you. I rest on you. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray. Let this message reach up to the uttermost part of the of the earth in Jesus' name. Oh angels of the living God, take charge. I say show you at every entrance of this message to have your way to take control, to take charge in the name of Jesus. Oh Father Lord, I pray that oh God. Jehovah God, at the end of this message, it is only you that will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I praise the name of the Lord concerning your life. I pray that the, whole, the Lord God Almighty will continue to be with you all in Jesus' name. I welcome you all to this platform. Let me re re let me put out this AC so that my voice can be heard very clearly. I I bless the name of the Lord concerning your lives and my life for making us see this day. It's a day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As you all know, my name is Evangelist Dr. Esther Olayin Kadia, and the topic today is about parent. What do you owe your parent? What do parents owe their child? What do you as a parent, what do you owe your child? What it is, what is it that is your role? What is it that is in your hands? What is it that you have that is for your child, that you owe that to your child? I want to bring us into a train of thought and awareness tonight. 
and I pray that the Lord will help me to do so in Jesus' name. According to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6, it talked about the warfare going on regarding even the lives of our children. I read the weapons of the Christian warfare are the most powerful on earth against the weapons of darkness. This, it says that the weapons that the Christian have, they can demolish all the attackers of your destiny, who you are trying to pretend, who, who is trying to prevent you from reaching your goal, who are trying to prevent your, our destinies, ourselves from re reaching our goal and fulfilling our destinies. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 and 8 says, we speak with the wisdom. We, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, it would not have, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If the, world, the wisdom of God, if the world knew it, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus Christ. Because their crucifixion of Jesus Christ began the emancipation of our soul. It redeemed us back to Christ. It redeemed us back to what we lost in the Garden of Eden. The mistake of the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But do you know that at the beginning the devil saw Christ's destiny and didn't want it to happen. The devil knew that Christ had a purpose. The devil seeks to destroy the destiny of the children of God. He and his agents, they have devised many means of discovering the destiny of the children of God. For example, when a baby is born, they use a star. They try to locate a star. They try to look through what he has, what God has gifted him with to the world. Remember that everybody is gifted with gifts from heaven. When we come, we come with a gift. We come with a mandate. We come with a purpose. And the gift God has embedded in us is what will equip us to fulfill our destiny. Amen. The devil knows this. And therefore, he tries to cut off children from their destiny. So that they, from their birth, so that they will not fulfill their destiny. Hallelujah. So when a baby is born. They use the stars, they read his palm, and use light and sand to discover his destiny. The worldly people, the monic world, they use all these to discover the child's destiny. They want to know what he's packed with. They want to know what he's equipped with. They would then manipulate and abort the destiny. They also manipulate people's destiny by manipulating their placenta. They also use the placenta as a, a, a point of contact to the children. That is why even when women, when we give birth in the hospital, they always tell women, but what do we know in those days when we were giving birth? Maybe our borders knew anyway. I can't even say this is what, exactly what happened with the, death, the, the, the uh, placenta of my children. Hallelujah. I just gave birth and I brought the child home. And I thank God for what God is doing in their lives. But... The devil will also use different mechanisms, even getting hold of the placenta of the children. Amen? They also manipulate the people's destiny by manipulating their placenta, using charms and covenants, throwing things in the sea, and also by witchcraft. They use and manipulate our children's destiny. When Jesus was born, remember Herod, the spirit that kills good things in infancy. That is the name of Herod. That is the name of the spirit. You have to pray upon your child to bind that spirit against walking against your child. You have to bind that spirit in your child's life. Not to tamper with your child. That spirit of Herod. Herod sought to kill Jesus Christ because he heard about his, his star. The, the astrologers the people that saw the star, they came to tell him, jubilating. They thought he would be happy, but he was sad. Not all people that are your friends will jubilate with you over good things happening in your life, over good things happening in your children's lives. So you have to be careful even who you share your 
your your testimonies are good tidings and blessings wait so will seek to destroy it while they will laugh with you as if they are your friends it's not everything that is going on in your life or your children's life that you come online on social media to celebrate to talk about to jubilate because you don't know who the enemy is that is looking around the corner and surprisingly usually it is the people that are closest to us it is those that we call our friends that we call our our mentor that we call the, our 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 party our people our personal person it's people that we thought got our back and <clears throat> people that we can vote for that this one got my back it is those ones that are the most dangerous. Those ones are the ones that are usually you find are the enemies within. Hallelujah. I'm getting somewhere with what I'm saying. Amen. So, when Jesus was born, Herod sought to kill him. Joseph was warned by an angel to take him to Egypt so that his life will be spared. God revealed to Joseph the father of Jesus Christ to take him to Egypt to protect his life. You know, why God did why did God reveal to Joseph? Because Jesus Christ has a destiny. And how was Joseph? Now the point is, how was Joseph able to get connected? How was he able to know? How was he a channel for which God was able to speak to him? It's because Joseph as a parent, he did not he was he was not far away from God. He moved close to God. If you move close to God, God will reveal things to you. As a parent, you owe your child to be very close to God. It is your duty to move very close to the creator of that child. Remember that you are just a caretaker of that child. You cannot love that child as much as God loves that child. As a parent, you have to be a channel for which God could reach out to and tell you about that child about what to do concerning that child about how to nurture that child uh, about how to keep that child about how to protect that child if joseph was far away from god he wouldn't have been able to see that vision he wouldn't have been able to see that dream of god wanting him to protect jesus christ thank god that he was a man with the heart of god i was able to know that god was giving him a warning and he did protect jesus christ hallelujah that is why you and i are here today and we are called christians and god is with us and we are heaven bound hallelujah the devil did not realize that the death of jesus christ marked the beginning of his defeat if he knew that the death if that he planned so much for jesus christ was the beginning of his defeat he wouldn't have killed jesus christ all the resurrection money he wept as the lord glory rose from the dead when jesus christ rose from the dead on the third day on resurrection day the devil must have wept a lot he must have known that his own was finished he must have known that that day he knew that the battle was over because the battle has been won because we have obtained the victory because you and i have been set free from the captivity of the enemy i give glory to god to that god's prophecy had come to pass concerning the seed of the woman making it impossible to destroy the destiny of jesus by killing jesus the devil helped him fulfill his destiny hallelujah that was when jesus christ grew up as a man and he, 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 he began his purpose and preaching the gospel and after he fulfilled his purpose he was just 33 years old and then he had to leave because his job was done and the devil helped him to even complete his mission and the mission was completed on resurrection day hallelujah but right here i'm bringing you i'm bringing out the purpose of the parent in a child's life I'm talking to you about the, the parent of Jesus Christ. How they stood and played their role as a parent. If we look at Moses, when Moses was born. Moses was born with a mandate to deliver the children of Israelites out of Egypt, out of bondage. He had a mandate. There was a purpose for his birth. But thank God that also his parents stood up to protect him. Because also at that time, Pharaoh, uh, uh, yes, 
the first every first born every 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 male child every male child that was birthed was destined to be killed that was pharaoh's mandate at that time and that well that was the time that moses was born and because the devil knew the purpose he knew the mandate he knew that there was a purpose for that child moses so he made pharaoh to develop that on the on that law to kill every male child on the precept that the Egypt, the israelites were growing too many in the land of egypt that very soon they may overthrow the king himself in egypt and you know, take over the, the kingdom so he made that law and moses was born he made sure and they were killing the male children at that time but through uh, pharaoh's uh, moses sister miriam and the mother moses was protected you all know the story you can go and read it in the book of genesis hallelujah but here i'm talking about the role of a parent in a child's life what do you think your role is in your child's life what do you think your role is in your child's life in these last days the devil is waging serious war against the children knowing fully well that they are the leaders of tomorrow therefore you are advised to make sure you seek constant deliverance of your child of your children from the evil bondage that is rife among the youth today you must seek constant deliverance what i've already said the first point you must be very close to god you must be somebody that God can talk to. You must be somebody that God can reveal things to. And how do you do that? By making sure that you are standing right before God. By making sure that you give your life to Jesus. You owe your child that by giving your life to Jesus. You giving your life to Jesus is not, not only for your own salvation alone. It's also for the salvation of your children. Because what you do is what you will put... Um, what you will pass over to your child your children it is when you know this god that you can teach your children about god it is when you know the the power of god and the god that you serve that you can be able to exercise that power over the protection of your children you that you are very far away from god how do you protect your child on the days of evil remember that when you give back to that child you have been put as a custodian as a as a custodian of that child while here on earth you are that child's custodian you have taken up a job a job that you that you that is automatically embarked on you the minute you brought that, that child into the world and you will fulfill that mandate and that mandate of, of being being represented you have to represent your child here on earth how do you represent your child you have to protect that child against every dance of the enemy as a parent you are you cannot leave your child alone to suffer you cannot leave your child alone to go through turmoil you are supposed to be a pillar a reference a ref a, 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 a ref a refuge for your child and you are supposed to be a fortress you are supposed to be your the strength for your children you cannot just let them go and let them be you cannot just let them suffer and you can just let them do whatever they like no you cannot do so you cannot do so because they are the targets of the enemy the devil is targeting them seriously the devil wants to see the end of them Psalm 8 verse 2 said, Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, as thou ordained strength because of thy enemy, thou mightest them, them, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. God has planned for children. He wants to use them to defeat the enemy. The plan of God in this time, in this end time, is to use the children to defeat the enemy. But how can God get to these children if you as a parent are not fulfilling your role in the life of those children? How can God use these vessels, these young children, if you as a parent, you are not fulfilling your role in their life? You are supposed to point the way to them. You are supposed to nurture them. You are supposed to teach them. You are supposed to show them the way of the Lord. You are supposed to show them right from wrong. I tell you, 
these children are constantly receiving information and they are you know and and they are sometimes they sometimes find it difficult to distinguish between the true and the counterfeit they're finding it difficult to distinguish between good and bad sometimes they find it difficult to distinguish between true and false sometimes also social and moral values provide fertile ground for the entrance of demons into their lives they mingle every day with their peers they go about every day they are with their their peer groups most times of the day so they pick up all these social habits they pick up all these counterfeits uh, demonic social uh, uh, i would say hypothesis they pick up demonic social uh immoral behavior they pick up demonic social teachings sayings and if you are not careful as a parent you will watch your children deviate from you you will watch them move away from your presence and and, 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 the, and the water may wash them the, the life this life may the cares of life and what they pick up on the streets can wash them away like tsunami and you may not be able to reach them anymore you may not be able to exercise your protection over them anymore but as a parent you must not give up parents don't give up just like jesus christ did not give up on us just like god did not give up or give up on us the bible says that god gave his only begotten son god gave his only last card god took a chance because he, he didn't know if jesus christ will succeed or that mission that he set him to do that is to die for the sins of the world supposing on that cross jesus christ says you know what i don't want to do this anymore because even at a point christ cried out in pain he said oh father why has thou forsaken me that was to tell you how difficult that job was that was to tell you how very difficult it was even god christ cried out but he persevered he went through it and he gave up the ghost and he rose up on the third day thank god for the success of that mission god took a chance on, on us he took a chance he spent his last card on his on his creation you and i so therefore you parent that is the role that you're supposed to pay play in your children's life you are supposed to stand there too thick and thin you are supposed to protect them you are supposed to do everything that it may take for them to be at peace for them to be at comfort you shouldn't have a child that is being maligned you shouldn't have a child that is being punished that is being uh, uh, abused that is being demoralized that is being you know beaten up that is gang gangs are ganging up on him gangs are making life difficult on him the enemies are snuffing the life out of him you shouldn't be a parent and that we sit down and be able to eat or to sleep you owe your child that to create that protection for your child the senses of what these children see of what these children hear of what these children touch and what they eat it affects them on a daily basis you do not follow your children everywhere they go you don't know who is touching them you don't know who is giving them things to eat you don't know who is touching their head who is stealing their stars you do not know any of those things but one thing is what you should know that if you are in constant prayer upon your children if you do not make yourself to be a fast a stranger to your child you do not you do not keep away from your child then you're on the right path towards protecting your child against the odds and the enemies of this world against the enemies of your children children are born right from the womb they have enemies right from when we were born immediately we get you we get back to our children immediately we were given back to we obtained enemy you have your own share of enemy immediately you come to this world you are given your own share of enemy immediately you do not have to offend anybody the children did not offend anyone 
They might not, you don't necessarily, I have enemies, you have enemies. Do I, have I offended everybody that took me as their enemy, that hates me? No. Some have never even met before. Some, they've not first spoken to me before. And they hate me with a passion. And they're in corners of their room. In the corners of their wardrobe. They are keeping a vigil against me. It's not a vigil of God. Because God is not present. But they are keeping together. They are keeping a demonic vigil. To see my downfall. To see that. Uh, he, 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 the, 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 the Bible says in John 10, 10. That the devil has come to kill, to steal or to destroy. So when this in demonic people when these enemies gather in their closet when they gather in their hidden places is to see me a, a doubt my downfall is to see that is either i lose that blessing is to see that they take that blessing away from me or is to see that you know i'm destroyed that is the purpose of the enemy to kill to steal and to destroy so when your enemies when they gang up together is to fulfill that purpose which their father the devil has sent them to do in your life Likewise, your children. So when you say you have enemies, you, the children you have brought into the world, they automatically have their own enemy. Because whoever is your enemy is their enemy. If you have generational causes battling your life, it's also battling their life. That is why you need to pray for yourself and your children. If you have enemies pursuing you, both sin and unseen, it is pursuing you. Immediately you give back to your children. Those enemies are pursuing your children as well. It is automatic. It is not a matter of thinking it out, uh, out, out or reasoning it out. It is automatic. The enemies of your life is the, the enemies of your children. And guess what? On top of that, they themselves will have their own enemies. As they begin to mingle. As they begin to socialize. As they begin to have friends. They will, continue, they will also have foes. They will also have enemies. So they, they will also we also even have their own enemy. On top of the one they inherited from you. As a parent, you owe your children to be at constant prayer, protection for your children. You must be a solace for your children. You must be a fortress for your children. You must be a rock for your children. You must be a succor for your children. You must be there. For them you must be there for them you must be their greatest cheer when they're in their valley you must have your arms open to have them to console them to be their strength to 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 to, to encourage them to cheer them on so that they do not lose hope in life they cannot fight the battles of life alone they don't even know how to fight the battle do they know but you as a parent it is your responsibility. It is your duty to know how to fight the battle of life. You see, nobody's, uh, nobody should give back to, to children in this world if you do not know how to fight a battle. First of all, you have to know how to fight a battle. You have to know that there are enemies in this world. And you have to know that you need God to fight your battle. You need Jesus to be on your side. You need to have Christ in you the hope of glory. It is at that time that you can now fight for yourself and then likewise fight for your children. You can't just throw those children out to the enemies, to the lion to eat them up. In the society of today, we see so many children, they are out there trying to fend for themselves, trying to go through life for themselves, trying to reason it out for themselves. They are in the set of confusion. They don't know what to do. They don't know where which path to go. They are first against enemies. They don't even know how to battle the enemy. They don't hide, have a solace, a hiding place to run to, to protect themselves. They don't know who to talk to. They don't know who to trust. As a parent, are you there for your child to talk to you? Are you there as a solace for your children? Are you there for your child to be able to open up to you? To tell you what they are going through? Have you been a channel of solace for your children? Of succor for them? A channel of fortress for your children? Can your children hope in you? Can they be, can they be rest assured that their father will, will back them up? Their father will never leave them in the furnace of fire. When they pass through the water, their father is them. Realize one thing. That it is you, the parents, that the children come to know. You are their angel right here on earth. They do not know this God yet. They haven't seen God. Neither have you. 
but you understand God more than they do. So it is you that will represent God in their lives for now until they are able to be wise enough, spiritually sensitive, to know that this God is a mighty God in their lives. It is through you that will explain, that will explain who God is in, our, in your children's lives. If you fail to do this, you are failed as a parent. If you fail to do this, you are failed as a mother. You are failed as a father. Fear, insecurity as well as physical and sexual abuse are happening to these children every day. Where are you as a parent in this children's life? Where are you in this children's life? Where? They are filled with fear, with insecurities. They are in a confused state. They are crying every day. And they are crying in the arms of their enemies. That they don't know that they are even crying in the arms of their enemies. They are trusting their enemies in their time of turmoil. In their, in their period of wilderness. They don't know that they should run from that. Because you parents, you are far away. I do understand like, that there are some children that are so stubborn. There are some children that they don't even want you, the parent, to be in their lives. There are some children that push the parent away. They are very secretive. They don't want you to interfere in their affairs. They don't want you to know what is going on with their lives. They block you at every road, at every path that you try to come into them. It is your duty as a parent not to give up on those children. It is your duty. No matter how much these children fence you off, no matter how much these children block you out, you should hover around them. You should place your red eye on them. You should watch them with binoculars. You don't keep away. You don't say that because it's blocking you, because it's not answering you, because it's not listening to you, that he wants you to keep away, therefore you will keep away. No. You have failed in your duty if you do that. As a parent, you don't say that because the child is abusing you, because the child is cursing you out, because the child is going out and ganging up and following bad gang and smoking and can't doing good drugs and is ganging against you. So that means you, you will keep away from such a child. You have failed in your duties. I know that we can only try and try and try our best as a parent. And But God does the rest. But you, are you praying to God concerning that child? Because you may say, I have tried my best. I have done everything possible as a parent. To move near him. To show him the way. To show her the way. To teach him the good things and the bad things. To counsel the child. To tell him not to do these things he's doing. That this is wrong. That you can be delivered. Jesus Christ can be. You may say that. But are you praying enough for that child? The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous are veiled much. And the power. There is power in interceding. When you intercede for people. For the nation. For churches. It, 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 God answers. Not to talk of if you intercede for your own child. Your own blood. Blood is thicker than water. It was through blood that you were redeemed. I was redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, your blood too has the power. When you speak concerning that child, when you pray concerning that child, because of that blood connection, prayers speedily get answered. Are you praying enough for your child? Are you talking to God enough for your child? I Or you're giving up on that child? I'm looking at what is going on in the society today. About the unrest going up, going up and down. About this, this act is called Mobad. I don't listen to secular music. I only listen to gospel music. I'm not criticizing those that listen to secular music. I'm not criticizing you. But I just love my gospel music. And there are, so, there are, so, there are too many numerous gospel music that I've not even finished listening to them. Or not to, for me to have time to be listening to secular music. But I'm not saying secular music is wrong. No, that's not the purpose of my message today. 
But I'm saying that I, even though I don't listen to all these things, but the death of this boy called Moban is all over the internet. I can't say that I can't I can't I can't say that my ears are deaf that I cannot hear or my eyes are blind that I cannot see what is going on on the internet. I am a parent. I am a mother. I am a woman of God. I am a vessel of Christ. I'm a preacher, I'm an evangelist. But at the same time, I'm a mother. I have blood flowing in my veins. So I feel the pain of that child because I have children as well. If you're a mother, if you're a true mother, a real mother, you feel the pain of your children. You feel it. Christ feels our pain. Jesus Christ, when you are going through pain, he feels, he feels that pain. That is why he, he shows up when you are in that wilderness. Christ will show up for you because he feels your pain. When you are in the valley, he will be there because he feels your pain. He showed up for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace of fire. He showed up for Daniel in the, in, in, in the lion's den. He showed up for Joseph. And he brought him from the pit to the throne because he's a parent. Are you showing up for your child? Or if the child is alone in the wilderness? I can't sleep. I'm thinking about it. I'm reading about it. And I feel the pain. It is, it's all over. They're talking about this Moban. About how life was not out of it. Without un untimely, the causes of his death, how the boy pleaded, how he called out to the nations, to his friends, to the world, to the government, to the police, to help him. He doesn't want to die. He cried out for help to save his life. But that is not even my issue now. My issue is not the government that they cried to. My issue is not the police that did not act on his complaint. My issue is not even after those that are after him. My issue is with you, the parent. What did the parents of Mobad, what did they do? I'm not here to apportion blame. I don't know the details of what happened. But I'm here to remind you of your role as a parent. Could it be that his father was being threatened? Not to talk? That is why he didn't cry out? Could it be that the mother was threatened? He even sang a part that he said the mother was not, he didn't see his mother for 10 years. How can a mother not see his child for, for a child for 10 years? Fine, you are divorced. You are separated from your husband. Does that mean you are separated from your child as well? No matter what the situation may be, I'm talking to women generally. No matter what the situation may be for you, once you when, whether I'm not forcing anybody to be in a marriage, I was not in, in it too because of the abuse and the domestic violence. And I had to save my life so that I would not die like us in Achi died. So I'm not saying women should stay in an abusive relationship. But no matter where you go, you do not go far without your children. You do not go far without your children as a mother a father is a father they said fathers are fathers of the whole world so you cannot really i mean even though father's role is to protect their children and their family the man that god gave men is to is to is to be the one that will usher his family to heaven to make heaven that is the man that god gave men it's even not the woman's man it's a man's mandate that you will find a wife, you have found a good thing, you will find, make a family, and you have to meet the one. You are the prophet of your home to lead them to salvation. Men will not fail a lot in their responsibilities. But a woman, a woman is a nurturer. A woman is, a, is, is an incubator. A woman is a blessing. She is a one. She her arms are wide. A woman is emotionally attached to her children. A woman can die for her children. What happened to this person called Mubad spirits? Are they silencing you? 
Are those threatening Mobad silencing you? If they are silencing you, you do not know that you are the one that should be in the forefront. You do not know that you are the one that should be in the forefront of the war. Anyone that wars against our children is warring against us. Don't we know? Don't we know that? Don't we know that? That anyone that rises up war against our children has declared war against you, the parent. So you cannot be silenced. How can you keep silent in the face of threat? And your child is being threatened every day until the life was knocked out of that bright star. And more importantly, they said the father was a pastor. A pastor that does not know that the weapons of his warfare is not carnal, but through God to the mighty, to the pulling down of struggles and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Ephesians 6 12. A child cannot fight their battles alone because they are children. That is why God made sure that it's not only one person that can give birth to a child. God made sure that it's not only a woman by herself can be give birth to a child. Neither can a man by himself give birth to a child. There has to be a combination of the two. Because one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. When two come together, they give birth to that child. So the child has a pillar of both the father and the mother. I don't care if the mother is separated from the father. Wherever the mother is, you can still be a comfort, a solace, a fortress, a succor, a pillar, a refuge for your child. You can still be a refuge for your child, no matter where you are. And I don't care how much the, the child throws you away. I don't care how much the child barricades you from coming near them. I don't care how much the child shuts you away from their lives. It is your responsibility not to go. Let that child chase you. Let that child curse you out. Let child, that child demarcate you, block you. It is your duty as a parent, as a parent, as a parent to keep close. Whether the child likes it or not, you keep a very close, 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 binoculars close on your children until they are matured enough to know this God and know how to roar into his name. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe so, until that child knows how to run into that name to be safe. It is your duty. Your duty as a parent to keep bringing that child under the canopy of Jesus Christ. Whether the child shuts you off or not, you have to fight to stay in that child's life. You brought the child into the world. You have to fight for that child. So you parent, your role is not just to give back to that child. You cannot give up. It's impossible to give up. God did not give up on us. You cannot give up on your children. You are a representative of God in these children's lives because you are who they see. You can't give up. You have to keep fighting for your child. Children's destiny should not be cut off just like that. Like this child, this child that the whole world is going crazy about now. Even me that I don't know him. I've, I, 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 I've been emotional. Tears have been coming out of my eyes. I do not understand. You don't wait. You do not wait. You do not wait for that child to die. You should be in the forefront of the battlefield for that child. You should be in the forefront. Look at this uh, uh, boy. This case that happened three years ago. About uh, Don Jazzy's mother. Don Jazzy, that the, the Don Jazzy was an 11 year old boy that was sexually molested by his peers in school. In the boarding school. The mother cried out. There were so many threats against her life. She did not keep quiet. She cried out until her voice was heard. And when her voice was heard, necessary authorities stepped into the matter and the situation was resolved. And she did not die. And the child did not die. Despite the threats. Who is it that will threaten you when God is on your side? The Bible says that Christ is not the hope of glory. If God be for you, who can be against you? Where are you 
in the days of your children's pains, in the days of their agony, where are you the parent? How are you able to eat, drink, wine and sleep when your child is in danger? You as a parent, where are, they, where are you? You are supposed to be on your knees praying and you are supposed to keep close to that child. Because whenever that child is chasing you away, it's the plan of the enemy to chase you away. Because he knows when you are away from that child, he can do whatever he likes with that child. Like they did with this child that died in Nigeria that the whole world is crying about. After his death, now his voices are being heard. Now people are now hearing his voice, including me, that never knew him in his existence before. I heard his voice. We are all hearing his voice. We cannot silence his voice in his silence. He has kept silence now. He cannot talk, but the whole world are hearing him. We hear him every day. As I'm speaking to you, I'm hearing him. His voice cannot be silenced in his death. Where is everyone when this boy was alive looking for help? Where are the parents? But that did not see the child for 10 years. He, he did. How can you be alive somewhere? What are you doing? That you are do you are, you don't you have not gone you you don't see your child for one month two months three six months one year two years ten years and you call yourself a mother many people are not fit to be called a mother that give birth to children some are not fit. To be called a mother. I don't care what the situation may be. I don't care what the circumstance may be. I don't care what threat they may be threatening you. Or what culture or whatever tradition it is that you cannot come to see your child. As a mother, you want to see your child. The Bible itself said that even when God sees Christ, he was, he, he, he was happy. And when Christ sees us, he is joyful. You think that Christ will be away from us for if Jesus Christ is away from you for one day, you will know the you, you, you will you will feel it. The devil will have a field day against you. Let Jesus Christ be just far away from you for one day. The devil will have a field day in your you will you you will cannot survive the following day if Christ can just let go. So how can a parent let go of that child? For one day, two days, one week, one month, two months, six months, one year, ten years. Is that a parent? It's not only to bring out the child from your body alone. The parent is supposed to nurture the child as well. Your role. What you owe your child. You owe that child that nurturing. You owe your child protection. You owe your child a refuge. You owe your child a solace. You owe your child. You owe your child to be a rock in his life. If you cry, you you no matter how much the, the enemy silence you, as a parent, a parent, a true parent can never keep silence in the face of danger for their children. A, a, a mother will always seek for a child to be at peace. And to be well and okay wherever their children are. A woman that can turn their back on a child and be gone. And even when they ask that child, where are your parents? Where is your mother? The, the child can say the mother is there. The child knows the mother is alive, but he doesn't see the mother. So what how can he explain to his peers about the whereabouts of his mother? All he can say is the mother is there. That's what this guy, this bad guy boy had to tell his peers for his old friends when they were growing up when they were interviewing them he said that they said when they asked him about his mother he told them that she's dead he's always melancholy sad so they thought she was dead because that's the only way to describe her you are alive but you are dead you are alive as a mother but in actuality, you are dead. Dead because you have no role to play in your child's life. You have no purpose. You are not fulfilling your purpose and your mandate in that child's life. You are you not only to nurture that child by giving life to that child and giving birth to that child. 
you have to nurture that life that you gave back to into maturity. And when I say maturity, until when that child knows how to run into the name of Jesus and be saved. That's when the child has reached maturity. So if at 27 years old, the child does not know yet how to run into that name, you are still, you supposed to still be there as a mother, nurturing that child, teaching that child about the way of the Lord. And crying out in the face of danger for help. If you cannot do it, cry out for help. Cry out for help. Cry out for help on behalf of that child. Do not keep quiet. Do not keep quiet for your child. Do not. You leave your child alone in the face of danger. You leave him to the wolves to tear him apart. It's danger out there. All day is full of danger and pain. You can't leave the child alone to fend for himself, to look for solution to issues by himself. You should be there as a mentor. To mentor your child. To counsel your child. To nurture your child. To equip your child with what that child needs to survive. And to succeed. The role. What you owe your, your child. As a parent. As a mother. I'm not it down to mother. Because mother is supposed to be peculiar. And incubate. We are the one that nurture the child in our womb. We give back to that child. So mothers, mothers, is a whole new ball game with mothers. Mothers are a true mother are ready to die for their children, even if a father does it. Where are you as a mother in your child's life? What you owe your children, you owe them a lot. Not your child in the way that you should go. When it grows up, you will not depart from it. Are you nurturing that child in the way that he should go? What is that child doing? Hanging out even on the streets with those that are smoking weed, with those that are smoking uh, drugs. How did that child get to be there with you as a parent still alive? You are not dead though. I'm not talking about orphans. Orphans, their father and their mother are dead. We understand that one. Even though uh, grandfathers, grandparents, extended families sometimes they rise up and take care of that child sometimes they maltreat them sometimes they take care of them so it is a 50-50 they might be lucky and get into the hands of family members they will take care of them and nurture them and make and they will become somebody and fulfill their destinies and they may end up with the bad ones but you as a parent you are alive in your, your life you are alive what is your role in your child's life you owe them a lot. You owe them a lot. You owe your children a lot. You shouldn't be able to sleep, to eat, to drink. If your child is in danger, if your child is crying for help, if your child is being maligned, he's being beaten, he's being... If your child is being oppressed, if he's, being, if he's weeping, if your child is in danger, how are you able to sleep? How are you able to eat? How are you able to drink? How are you able to go about your own daily activities? From outside, you can still be part of your children's life. Be divorced, but you can still be part of your children's life. You can still watch them like a hawk. But as I know to watch them as, as a hawk. Even the animals will not leave their children alone. Watch how mother hen watches after our children. Watch, it, watch how the hawk watches after their children. Watch how animals they watch after their children. Even animals. Not to talk of we, human beings, parents. We owe our children a lot. Do not be at peace when your children are not at peace. Don't be at peace. Wolf, it's time to arise. I'm calling on all mothers. It's time to arise for your children. Listen to them. Get to know what is in their heart. Get to know them. Get to know their pain. Talk to them. Nurture them. 
encourage them. Speak kindly to them. If they are stiff-necked and they are, you know, fancy you away, as a mother, you should know how you should get around and walk around there to get through to that child. You get back to that child. You should know. I know what I'm saying. Because I've been through it too. You should know. Let that child do anything to you, abuse you, or whatever. Don't leave that child. Because the child that abused you today, we come back to say, I'm sorry, when they are, when they now get it right. Then we come back. And then we thank you for never leaving them at the time when they themselves know that you're supposed to leave them. Because of their attitude and their bad behavior to you. You owe your child everything. Or till that child is able to stand. Even when a child is standing, you should continue to be a soldier for your child. Be a soldier for your child. Be behind that child. A support. A refuge. Take care of your children. Love them. May God help you all in Jesus' name. I pray that destiny killers glory killers we don't locate all your children in jesus name mothers rise up rise up to your duties parents rise up oh, there we say parents i mean father and mother and i'm also particularly calling out the mothers so i'm talking about parents and i'm talking to you mothers as well rise up play your role in your children's life you owe them that that protection understanding refuge solace fortress you owe your children that be their strength be their greatest cheer don't leave them to the lion help them in their battles and in their challenges let them know that they are not alone in the challenges of their lives be there as a support God help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless all our children. They will not die young. They will fulfill their destinies in the name of Jesus. The enemies of their soul will not win the battle over their lives. They will arise and they will shine. I cover them all in the blood of Jesus and myself and yourselves. I sanctify your home with the blood of Jesus. I create that demarcation, that wall, that pillar between all our children and their enemies. They shall not be able to penetrate to them in Jesus' name. I separate all our children from every unfriendly friend that is trying to teach them, malign them, teach them the, the demonic ways of the world. I declare, let them be separated from all our children from today on in the name of Jesus. I pray that our children, all of them, shall fulfill their destinies. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord strengthen you, the parent, to play your role as a parent. To be a keeper of your children. May the Lord strengthen you to know what you need to do in the face of danger concerning your children. To know how to roar. To know how to speak. How to cry out. How to fight the battle. To know how to call God into the battle and how to win the battle for your children. In the name of Jesus. I declare all the battles against our children. The enemies we lose and our children, they will win them all in Jesus' name. Their lives will glorify God. God will use them in this end time. God wants to use these children. May your children and my children be part of those children that God will use in this end time. In the name of Jesus. That office, that mandate that God has given each and every one. They will fulfill them in Jesus' name. And the talent and gifts God has embedded in each and every one will not be buried before they, they fulfill, use it to fulfill their destinies in Jesus' name. The glory will not be, 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 be killed in their lives. They will not lose their, their stars in the name of Jesus. We are caretakers of these children. We are supposed to be there through thick and thin. 
May the Lord equip us and empower us, the parents, to play our role in their lives in Jesus' name. May most importantly, may we all know our role. What we owe these children. May it begin to dawn on each and every prayer from this from today in Jesus' name. And may the Lord equip us all to play our roles. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being with me. Thank you all for staying. Thank you all. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you. Have a blessed week. I pray that the week, the Lord will go through it on your behalf and silence every enemy on your behalf in Jesus' name. You shall have a victorious, prosperous week this week in Jesus' name. You will have cause to rejoice and testify to the goodness of God concerning this week in your lives. In Jesus' name. And so on. So forth. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you all. And God be shalom. Love you all.